Hi, how's it going? Welcome to OpenGL Oversimplified. Today is just a chill afternoon session. I'm playing around with drawing shapes and investigating different draw modes and how they work. You're probably pretty familiar with a line like this. We go draw arrays, we draw in triangle mode, um, and then we have the first vertex and the number of vertices that we're drawing. But we do have some other options. Now, before I go into this, basically there's, there's two things I'm gonna look at. Firstly, I'm gonna have a look at these different drawing modes. And then secondly, I'm going to investigate how um, something called edge tables, what an edge table is and how we convert an edge table to a set of vertices. So we're going to have a look at, at model loading as well. So um, just before we get into it, here is the vertex data that we're working with. It's of the form X, Y, Z, RGB. Remember from previous things or just from real life that um, negative X is on the left, positive X is on the right, negative Y is at the bottom of the screen and positive Y is toward the top of the screen with the origin being center of the screen. So if we were to plot these out, they would be going counterclockwise from uh, left bottom to the right bottom, then up to the right top and left top. So just imagine a rectangle going around counterclockwise. Okay. To start with, let's go points mode. All right, so we're gonna draw all of this. We're gonna draw it in points. There we have it. Now these points are nice and big. And the way I achieved that was with the point size function or well, inbuilt variable. So if you want to do that, we just need to enable the uh, GL vertex program point size option. And then in the vertex shader, we set the GL point size variable and that makes the points nice and big so we can see them. And I'll just play around with this for a little bit. So um, we can start at vertex zero and just draw one point. There we have it, there's our one point there. And I've also set up, just to illustrate, I've set up this frame variable, which is just gonna keep repeating between uh, zero and three. So if we set that, we're going four frames per second, nice and slow, we can actually see the points. So zero, one, two, three. Just like that, that's pretty cool, that's nice. Real story, when I first made my first, when I oh, say that in a weird way, when I made my first rendering system, the first thing I did was literally just draw a point to the screen and it wasn't working. And I was spending so long looking at the screen, trying to see it. There's a little, a little dead pixel somewhere in my screen. It's a blue pixel somewhere in the center, like here or somewhere. And that was showing up on the background. And I was like, I was like, where is it? Oh, I'm just playing around here. Um, let me go frame plus one. So this is just varying the number of points that we draw. There we go. Just like that. I mean, that's points mode. We just go one at a time and it draws points. Okay, so let's just get rid of that. Switch it back to the original. And what happens with lines? So when we did points mode for each point, as soon as the shader saw it, it said, right. As soon as the graphics pipeline saw it, it said, right, that's a shape. Dispatch that to the fragment shader or dispatch the fragment shader and the vertex shader and, and all of that. But um, when we go beyond that, see here we have lines. We start to get to the point where we do input assembly. So we have the points zero, one, two, and three. When we're drawing in lines mode, the first it, we group the points in sets of two. So let's see the first two points, zero, one. The input assembly stage takes, you know, once it's seen those two points, then it dispatches a vertex shader on each of them. And then the rasterizer will interpolate in between and same up here. So then we see the next set of two points, two and three. So the input assembly says, right, we have another line and the vertex shader, rasterizer, and fragment shader do their thing. 
So note that these lines are disconnected. Hmm. Well, if we want to get the lines connected, we can draw a line strip. And the way a line strip goes, let me just do this now, is for each point that we get additional to the first two points, it's understood that the, the new point is really like a new end point. So we go um, zero to one, then we see point two, but the input assembler says, hey, I'm in stri uh, yeah, strip mode, so I recognize that the previous point is involved here. So we go, yep, we go one to two, and then two to three, and that's it. And that's it. So what do you reckon we should do if we want to get back to the original point, make a closed loop? Well, we could hack it a little bit and say draw five points, but that doesn't quite work. Have a look at this. So we go draw, 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 and now we want to go back to the start, but the buffer that we've passed in doesn't have that much data. And so when we get the next point beyond the defined data, it's all zeros as it turns out, if we're lucky, otherwise it's completely random. But as you can see, the position is zero, it's at the center of the screen, and the color is zero as well gone black. So that's not going to work. What we could do is we could copy the first point of the buffer and actually make like a buffer with an extra point. And that's okay, although it is a little memory heavy, or not that memory heavy, but it's a little wasteful. What we could also do is use line loop. Now with line loop, it's always understood that we get to the end point and then we loop around to the start. And again, I, I just want to say this, I think I briefly mentioned it, but remember that the vertex shader is invoked once on each of these endpoints, and then the rasterizer will interpolate all attributes, including position and color, between the points. And then it's the job of the fragment shader to fill that in. Okay, that's interesting. So again, let's have a look at this. If we put in three points, for instance, let me go zero, one, two, that's three points, and then we loop around to the start. Also pretty important, if we go, where are we? If we draw in lines mode, but we don't put in an even number of points. Remember, with lines mode, we get groups of two points. So what do you think should happen here? If you guess that only the first set of two points gets drawn, yeah. You're correct. Same thing with triangles. It takes three points to make a triangle. So unless you have three points, that triangle won't get drawn. But OpenGL is pretty smart. It knows when it's getting dodgy data and it does a pretty good job of sanitizing it. How about this one? Adjacency. Let's look at that one. Actually, just to jog our memory, we'll do the triangle strip first. Uh, the line strip, then we'll look at adjacency to compare. So with line strip, we have three lines. Let me call this line zero, one, and two. Now, if we change this to line adjacency, then we've only got one line. The way line strip adjacency works is it takes the first line, second line, and third line, and it interprets the first and the third lines as simply a bunch of metadata that's passed along with this line. So only this second line gets drawn on the screen, but if we had a geometry shader or something in between the fragment, a vertex and fragment shader, then we would be able to read some data about the neighboring lines. So this is really useful if you want to do some simple rendering where you want to know about your neighbors. We actually have triangle adjacency as well, where we pass in data about all the triangles which are connected to the current triangle, and we can do that for uh, curvature tests and things like that. But yeah, it's just important. I think it's just cool to be, it's very cool, just to be aware of the different options that we have. So then we have triangles, and that's the classic thing that we're used to. 
We take a set of three points, make a triangle. There's a fourth point here, but a fourth point is not three points, so we can't make a second triangle there. However, what we can do is a triangle fan. So have a look at this. With the triangle fan, remember the order of points here. We have 0, 1, 2. There we go. That makes a triangle. And then we put in this next point. And the way this goes is we take the last point which was drawn and the first point which was drawn and it sort of fans outwards. So then if we put another point like over here, we would have the last point which was drawn, the first point which was drawn, and this incoming point, and then that would make another triangle over here and then we could keep going around. So if we have triangles which are sort of centered around a center point, then triangle fan could be a great option. See, we've got a quad, but we're only putting in four points. And what the input assembly is actually doing under the hood is it's actually remembering the previous points which were drawn, um, but it just sets it up so that we don't need to double up on our data in our buffer. Okay. And the last one that I'm going to look at is triangle strip. Now triangle strip grows a little differently. And this is, I think this is a common error that, um, that I see. So what we do is we go points 0, 1, 2, and that makes a triangle. And then when we put the next one in, this is meant to be joined to the last edge which was drawn, 0 to 1. So we take that point, join it to that edge, and that makes this sort of scissor shape. This is reminding me of something. Is this like um, the Kotlin logo or something? I don't know. Now there is another option, uh, quads. And quads is, is really under the hood generating two triangles to fill the space. However, unfortunately, quads is legacy OpenGL. It was discontinued. It is not a valid drawing mode in modern OpenGL. All right, so the next thing I want to look at is the concept of an edge table. Now, this is one of those things, it's really not that big of a deal, but a lot of people sort of get intimidated when they see the word edge table, but really it's just a standard description of a polygon. So let's say that I have some five-sided shape and I want to sort of draw it like this. So I have the points, okay. And it's understood that if I draw these out in this order and then repeat, like loop back from the start to the end, then that is going to make a full polygon. So my edge table for this would include all of the in info that I need to draw each of these points, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And for each of those, it would be all of the attributes, all of the data associated to that point. So in the code example that I was doing, we had X, Y, Z, R, G, B. It would be all of that data. So in order to in order to convert this into something that we can actually draw, it needs to be triangulated, I believe is the word for it. And that's basically the idea of like, we take this, these points, how do we convert that to triangles? I'm going to go through a few different methods. First of all, let's try a triangle fan. So if I do this in a triangle fan, I have 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, that's one triangle. And then let's go 0, 2, 3, that's the next triangle. And then the top triangle we can see here goes 0, 3, 4. Whoops. Just imagine it's, okay, it's coming over here, 0, 3, 4. That's the next triangle. So then it's a pretty valid question to ask, like how much data would this buffer use? So we have 24 bytes per buffer because we have six, sorry, per vertex, because we have six attributes and four bytes per attribute. And here we have nine elements in the buffer. And so that would be, I believe, 216 bytes of data. Okay, so that's using a triangle fan. 
How about a triangle strip? This one's a little trickier, and the reason is that we need to... Let me try to remember this. Um, preserve the... I'm just thinking. Preserve the interior. Like the, the second line that we draw gets preserved. So if I go one, two... I'm just thinking. Yeah, zero, one, two... No, one, two, zero. One, two, zero. And then this line between zero and two is the current bit that's being drawn onto. And then I guess, I guess we'll go three. We'll sort of add that bit there. And then four, I wanna say, test this. Test that that actually works. In this case, we have five uh, vertices Five lots of 24, 120 bytes, provided I haven't messed anything up. Okay. Another approach is to just draw this as standard triangles. Oh, wait a second. That's the way I did it before. Okay. So that thing I did before was the standard triangles work. Um, to do a triangle fan, we have 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, and then I add the point 3. And that will include that point. And then I add the point four. And that will include that point. Oh, this is looking pretty similar to triangle strip. Oh, take this with a grain of salt. Anyway. But then the, the, the issue is, which of these is best for representing geometry? Like if we get in a random object model file, it'll have a whole bunch of these for every face. And actually, we can't use triangle strips or triangle fans. And the reason for that is that all of those draw modes, in some way, a thing will affect, a face will affect the next face, which gets defined. If we use triangle fan, then we'll have all our geometry and there'll be some common point. So we have all these faces and stuff. And then in some way, they'll be all joined to the common point. And then if we use a triangle strip, we have to be very careful about which order faces are defined, like it's just not good. So we have some options. Let me just, in general, there are two options, um, naive triangles or indexed drawing. So I'll just do the naive triangles again. I know I accidentally did it before, but I'll just go through it again. So zero, one, two, zero, three, four. And that is 216 bytes of data, a little bit wasteful. What we can do instead is we can do indexed, indexed drawing. So, so we have two sets. We have a, an, a vertex set, which is just passing in the data with no modifications. And then we have this index set, which is saying, hey, um, take indices 0, 1, 2, construct a triangle with that. That's referencing into this array. Take indices. 0, 2, 3, make a triangle with that. Take indices 0, 3, 4, make a triangle with that. Now, it might look like this is using more memory, but if we look at what's actually being used, we have five vertices, which are 24 bytes each, plus nine indices. Now, in the worst case, that's a 32-bit integer, I guess. 64-bit if you're masochistic, but... Um, that's using a lot less space than a vertex. So it's representing it more compactly. This turns out to 120 plus 36, 156 bytes. And with larger models, that gets a lot more meaningful. So I guess the whole point of this is just to start thinking about how shapes are constructed, the difference between regular triangle drawing and indexed drawing, and yeah. I mean, just to investigate things. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this chill session. Had a look at some drawing modes. And yeah, hope it helped. Alrighty. Anyway, have a great one, as always. And I'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye.